All right, so today I want to share some tips and tricks on how you can get your ball python to eat. Now let me tell you, if you bought a ball python and you're not used to these kind of snakes, they will drive you crazy by not eating, sometimes for extended periods of time. And as a matter of fact, a ball python like this one around my neck, Bobby here, they can go up to two years without eating a single meal, which is pretty incredible. I wouldn't recommend going that long. Actually, there's certain things you can try along the way to try to get them to eat. And the, and the funny thing is, is it seems like uh, pretty much from the hatchling stage all the way to the yearling stage, I'd say most ball pythons will eat on a regular basis. So if you go to Reptile Show and you pick up a ball python and you start feeding them week after week after week, it'll eat for like a whole year, sometimes even longer. And then for whatever reason, just <laughs> the phase of the moon or whatever, it'll stop eating and it'll decide this, this, it does not want to eat anymore. And let me tell you, for a new ball python owner, it can be extremely frustrating. Frustrating. As a matter of fact, at one of the, my reptile shows, I sold a yearling ball python for their very first snake, which is kind of interesting. And I tend to kind of beef my snakes up a little bit more than, than typical, just because if I sell them, they have some really good body condition to go on a fast, just in case the new owner has some problems. And as a matter of fact, someone bought a snake and it fasted for eight months straight, and I actually bought that snake back. And the, and the funny thing is, as soon as I put it in my rack system here in my reptile room, it started eating like crazy again. So really it comes down to several factors you really have to pay attention to, and I'm gonna cover those in this video. And I'd say probably one of the biggest things that has really changed the feeding behavior of my snakes that I've recently implemented in this room is I added a whole room humidifier, which is pretty interesting because I didn't realize that the humidity in the whole room really had an impact. I thought it was mainly the humidity in the tubs. And I'd always go through and make sure there was you know, enough moisture in the substrate underneath the coconut husk to really give a good humidity. But the funny thing is, as soon as I added a humidifier in this room, it seems like all my snakes started eating all pretty much all at the same time. It's funny because you can make one small change to something in the room here and it'll affect all the snakes almost at all at the same time. So I'd say probably the number one thing is if you're having problems with your ball python eating, I would consider moving them to an enclosed room, close the door and add a humidifier. And I want to show you real quick what my humidifier looks like. It's I actually got it on Amazon. It's really cheap and inexpensive, really easy to fill. And let me show you that humidifier. All right, so I wanted to show you this humidifier real quick. The thing I like about this is it's really inexpensive. I paid like 40 bucks for it on Amazon. I'll actually put a link below so you can check it out. And the thing I like is it's just a one gallon and it's super easy to fill. So you just take this off, flip it over, put it on the table, fill it up, and then put it right back in. And I run it on level two, which is the highest it'll go. And it's not really that loud. You can see it's got a little bit of noise to it, but it's not that bad. And then I actually have an air cleaner on the other side of the room that drowns us out. You can't even know that it's working. But you walk in the room and you can definitely feel that there's humidity in the air. And for some reason, my snakes have just been going crazy on, on their feeding response. Ever since I got this, it's amazing. And I come down here for uh, to, to wa top off the water on my rodents pretty much twice a day. So what I do is it probably uses half a gallon per day, maybe a little bit more down here. And uh, what I do is I just top it off in the morning and in the evening. It's real easy. That's, it's, I just can't believe since I added this humidifier how much more my snakes have been willing to eat. It's pretty amazing. So ever since I added that humidifier, my snakes have been feeding like crazy. I actually have never seen so many of my snakes eat rodents uh, on a consistent basis. It's pretty incredible. I also wanted to show you, just take a quick peek into one of these tubs. These are my females that actually just laid eggs and you can tell they're definitely kind of keyed in on another rodent. And essentially what I do is I keep this coconut husk. It's, this is actually a pro cocoa 
coconut husk and I keep it a little damp on the bottom and then on the top it's pretty dry so the snake is actually sitting on the dry coconut husk and then you can tell at this point it's it's kind of it, if it has enough humidity in here enough moisture in the coconut husk it pretty much forms like this solid mat and once it starts drying out it kind of breaks up a little bit and that's not really like I like it I like it really to, to form a solid mat where it's damp underneath but still dry on the top and essentially what I do is I use this little watering can here and I just go through and I love this watering can because I can go through and just quickly water the tub really quick and it's a lot faster than one of those pump up sprayers. I used to do the pump up sprayer and it took me, you know, almost, you know, 30, 45 seconds maybe per tub. And with this watering can, I can go through and it only takes me just a second or two to actually add uh, the, uh, enough humidity to this tub. And I just go through and make sure that there's enough humidity in here. And that along with the humidifier, and let me tell you, these snakes are really starting to pound the rats. And this guy is actually, the, the the female that produced my little dinker project, she's my female number four, but she is starting to pound their ass. It's pretty amazing how uh, almost just almost overnight since I added my humidifier, all these snakes are going back on feed. It is pretty incredible. All right, so I would say probably the last month or so, I'd say the biggest thing that's really helped me with my ball pythons getting them to feed is adding humidity to the air, which is kind of interesting. I never thought there'd be that big of a difference. And essentially where I am in the breeding season right now, I have like just a few more eggs in the incubator. I think I have six more eggs, and that'll be it for almost 100 hatchlings this year. So basically what I'm doing from here is I'm going to prepare for the next breeding cycle so over the next two months I really want all my females to eat really well and then if they if, if they eat really well then I can pair them up with the males and we can start the breeding season all over but the thing you have to really keep in mind if your females are underweight I've actually done this before my very first year in ball pythons I thought you know I have eight females I want to pair them all up with males and I'm just gonna roll the dice and play the odds the, the problem with that is that if you have females that are underweight and you pair them up with a male what happens is is they go into a breeding cycle they, they think they're breeding even though they don't have the body condition to develop the eggs fully and they'll fast for a long time and it's really especially if you have a really skinny female and you try to pair it up and breed it it can fast to the point where it gets super super skinny I've actually when I first started in snakes I actually had two king snakes I put the male and the female together full time in one enclosure essentially because I didn't have enough enclosures which is a big mistake the the female actually went into a breeding cycle fasted for a really long time and got skinnier and skinnier would just would not eat and then I realized it was a big mistake to actually pair those snakes up without the female having the body condition and without actually trying to breed the snakes so now what I do is I only have one snake, <laughs> one snake per tub I don't know what Bobby's doing here but it's, uh, and I actually I have seen some some people where they successfully put multiple snakes per enclosure but I wouldn't recommend it some people have good luck doing it I would say you pretty much always want one snake per tub make sure the females have a really good body condition before you actually pair them up so I'd say probably another tip and trick to get your ball python to eat is the substrate. And I would say make sure you have a clean substrate, and especially if you're using coconut husk. The interesting thing is, is I used to try a whole bunch of different substrates, and when I went to coconut husk, the, the coconut chip husk, like a pro cocoa or a repta chip or something like that, it seemed like the appetites of the snakes just skyrocketed and went through the roof. And I'm not sure if it's the smell of the substrate or the extra humidity or something the snakes just like about the coconut. And for some reason, they just feed like crazy when they get on that coconut husk substrate. And the other thing is, is I found that I pretty much changed my substrate between three and four weeks. I pretty much change it out. Uh, I spot clean pretty much through the month. And at the very beginning of the month, usually on the first of the month, I go through and I'll change all the substrate in all my tubs. It's, it's quite a bit of work to actually go through all these tubs and change it. I usually take it one section at a time, but I did find that at the end of the month with dirty substrate, a lot of ball pythons will, will go off of feed and stop feeding, which is pretty interesting. 
and especially if you have a ball python that just shed and went to the bathroom and then you try to feed them with a dirty tub for some reason the smell in there it's it smells pretty bad but some reason the, the smell will actually make the snake go off of feed so if you really want your ball pythons to feed really well i would tr I'd keep going through all your tubs it's probably i actually used to do this a lot more <laughs> back when i started and it worked really well you go through all your tubs like the day before feeding you add the extra humidity make sure everyone has enough humidity fresh water spot clean all the tubs and then the following day i would actually go through and attempt to feed and that seems like you get a lot more ball pythons actually eating and taking the food which is interesting so I'd say an, another tip and trick that you can try if you're having a problem with your ball pythons feeding is feeding them at the certain time of day. And I'd say if, if you have lights in your in your in your reptile room, or if you have you know ambient light, and most people just have a pet ball python, they're not like like set up like a breeder like I am. But it, but most I'd say most enclosures are on a regular light cycle where you have days and nights. And it's, the, the funny thing is is ball python that are not really that sensitive to the light cycles but their feeding kind of is because if you try to if you go early in the morning or even like in the in the early I'd say like if you try to feed ball pythons like around noon which is kind of convenient for me on the weekends feeding them at noon I would say most of them won't eat which is kind of interesting and you got to keep in mind ball pythons are pretty much nocturnal so the best time to feed a ball python I found is pretty much between 8 p.m. and midnight is <laughs> pretty much the best time. The later the better, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, I was feeding last night about 11 p.m. and these snakes, they just come out of the shell and they start feeding like crazy. So if you actually come down here in the morning and you start opening all these tubs and looking in the tubs, not even trying to feed them, a lot of the ball pythons will be kind of asleep, coiled up over the hot spot. If you come down here at 11 p.m. and you pop open a tub, you can actually see them kind of perched up, waiting for a meal. So I'd, say, I'd definitely say the time of day definitely has a big impact on feeding ball pythons. So I actually have an interesting situation where I have one snake that has always been a problem feeder and really it's because of the relationship between me and my snake which is kind of interesting you think about snakes and you think you know it can be your relationship between you and the snake that actually causes them to go off of food and essentially what happened was is I actually bought this bumblebee it's a bumblebee possible yellow possible yellow belly possible het pied I got it as a hatchling a long time ago as a matter of fact it was one of my very first ball pythons I was getting a little excited, maybe too excited, and I actually got this snake at the same time one of these racks was shipping in. And I thought, all right, I'm going to get this rack. It's supposed to be here today. As a matter of fact, the rack was a couple days late, and that's the reason why I kind of ran into a problem. And then I had the snake shipped to my house, and it kind of got beat up in the mail. So essentially what I did is, <laughs> I kind of regret it now, is I took the snake out of the box from the mail, opened it up, and I didn't really have a place to put it. So what I did is I put it on my kitchen counter in a glass aquarium with this little cardboard hide that I made out of just a, just a cardboard box. Put it in the glass aquarium and put him there. And that snake, he would get up on top of that cardboard and he would give me the evil eye and just snap at me. And I, I think what happened is, is the snake, associated me with the trauma of the shipping and it for some reason I just can't snap them out of it it's been a couple years since I got this thing it's been a, quite a few years and the snake is now a large female pretty much ready to breed but it, it always has a feeding issue so what happens is is when I go to open the tub it actually instead of you know when I'm putting the rodent in there instead of looking at the rodent and trying to eat the rodent it's looking at me instead of the rodent and even I can even block its view with the rodent and it still knows that I'm behind the rodent which is kind of bizarre and the only way I can really feed it uh, consistently is to crack open the tub just a little bit and pop a live rodent in there because essentially what happens is I am out of the picture it doesn't see me it doesn't go into defensive mode and almost every single time it instantly takes that rat 
and it's it's kind of unfortunate that we have a bad relationship me and that snake as a matter of fact i've tried to put it around my neck and hold it and for some reason i just can't snap it out of it as a matter of fact i did a video once with putting that snake around my neck and i was here for like I'd say an hour and a half with that snake around my neck. And at first it was like biting me and biting the camera and just kind of going crazy. It relaxed a little bit, but for some reason, even with a lot of handling, I just cannot snap that snake out of a bad attitude between me and the snake, which is, it's kind of weird to think about that a snake can be smart enough to figure out that, you know, it just does not like me, which is kind of interesting. So if you're having a problem feeding your snake, it could be the relationship between you and your snake. All right, so I want to share a secret with you that you may have not heard before. I actually saw this on a really old YouTube video, and I've never actually tried it before, but some people say that it works. Check this out. So I actually have a hatchling here, and I've actually heard if you're having a problem feeding a hatchling, you can actually grab them by the tail and kind of hang them uh, kind of upside down with their head lower then this one's kind of this one's kind of <laughs> at a weird angle and kind of balled up but i've heard you can actually hold them kind of like this at an angle and the funny thing is is when if i hold this uh, ball python like this and kind of move my hand a lot see it'll actually it'll actually trigger it to bite which is kind of weird and, and the funny thing is, is some people say if you're having a problem feeding a snake you can actually <laughs> you can actually hold it up like this with the head down and feed it like this and it'll actually take the the rodent which is kind of interesting I've actually done it on camera while I'm holding the snake kind of waving my hand and it'll snap but I've never actually tried it with the rodent but it's be interesting to see if you're having a problem with your snake to kind of hold it up with the head down and then feed it kind of while you're holding both the rodent and the snake to see if it would actually take it so here's another big issue if you're having problems feeding your ball python. If you're feeding it consistently a diet of mice and you suddenly switch to rats, for some reason ball pythons go crazy over mice and they don't really like rats that much, but you definitely want to get them off of mice as soon as possible. You don't really want them long term on mice. For example, Bobby here, I could give him one rat that I actually just fed him a rat and the, that one rat is probably the same as probably about 10 to 12 mice. And the problem is, is if you start feeding a mice, you'll be feeding mouse after mouse after mouse. And the problem is, is a lot of times ball pythons will eat once or twice and then they won't really keep eating. Like if you had like a corn snake or a reticulated python, you could just feed like a dozen mice right in a row. And a lot of times ball pythons, they're finicky enough. You really need a lot of mice to really beef them up. As a matter of fact, I have my spider jungle woma. It's, it's, it's a female that has been a mouser ever since I got it. As a matter of fact, when I read the, the ad, I actually bought it on Morph Market as a full-size adult. And after I got it, I went back to that ad and in a fine print on the bottom, it said, this is a mouser ball python will only eat mice. And the problem is, is it would eat one or two mice and then it wouldn't eat anything for a week. And let me tell you, if you're feeding mice, you will never get a ball python up to weight to, to breeding size feeding mice. So essentially in that situation, what I would do is I would offer a rat week after week after week. And I, I actually offered this one a live rat a couple times. I don't like to feed live, but it was a pretty small. It actually took the first live rat ever and it ate it and then regurgitated it, which was unfortunate. So a few weeks later, I tried another one and it actually ate it and kept it down. And now it seems like instead of offering mice, I will do rats uh, pretty much for like a month and a half straight offering every single week. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't take it, I just move on to the next snake and I just kind of ignore it. I won't give in to feeding mice to a mouser if I don't have to. And I'll usually feed mice very sparingly and follow it up with rat after rat after rat. As a matter of fact, the last two meals that this snake has eaten are two really decent sized rats. And let me tell you, if you can get a snake that's a mouser over onto rats, it is like a celebration because you know now you can actually feed some decent sized meals and probably Probably not this year. I probably won't have enough time to get it up to size, but maybe next year if it stays on rats and we can keep beefing it up, maybe by next year it'll be big enough to breed.
product. All right, so that wraps up my discussion on tips and tricks, how to feed your ball python. Hopefully something in this video helped you. And I would say probably the most frustrating thing is having a breeding operation with females that are on, going on a really long fast. That is pretty frustrating and you just can't get eggs out of those females for a couple of years. And hopefully something in this video will actually help you out and you can get your females back on food. So it is time for the question of the day. And Amber Grubbish asks, do you think it's okay to put males and females in the same rack system? And I would say as far as the snakes are concerned, there's really no problems at all. But I would say for, for breeders like me, most, most breeders will actually take you know a male like Bobby here and keep them on the thinner side. I would say usually this is probably a little bit big for a male. He's, he's pretty plump. He's kind of spoiled. But I would say most people keep them maybe a little bit thinner. And the reason is, is because you can fit more snakes in smaller tubs. So for example, in this rack behind me this is an ARS 5040. I could put a lot of males in a system like this where the females you really have to feed them pretty heavy because you want them to grow a little bit bigger so you can get more eggs from the females. I'd say most females will probably outgrow an ARS 5040 and you'd have to move them to an ARS 7030 rack. So I'd say pretty much based on the size of the snake that you're really looking at, I would say you'd have to move them from one rack to another. But as far as mixing them together in one rack system, it's no problem at all. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.